Julia Spencer is a real estate investor with over 25 years experience who owns multiple investment properties. She's a single mother of two who moved to the U.S. in 1993 with only $20 in her pocket. She currently holds an MBA. Julia Spencer is neither a realtor nor an attorney, and the contents of this recording are only her opinions. Get her free guide to investing at juliamspencer.com. I'm your host, Dr. Steve G. Jones, multimillionaire and hypnotherapist. My website is stevegjones.com. Essential Landlord Guide, Module 2, Leases, Essential Clauses. Hello, this is Julia M. Spencer, real estate advisor, investor, and enthusiast, and welcome to my module on leases, specifically leases, do's, and don'ts. I wanted to record this particular recording to teach new landlords kind of how to structure a lease and what things to put in there and what things that you can't put in there and basically get them acquainted with what a a good lease should look like. Um, That being said, I do advise new landlords to always utilize a property manager. Property managers have leases that are already set up There are already um, certain kinds of templates that they use. They're also state-specific or specific to your locality. And um, they're um, verified by lawyers to make sure that there's nothing in there that shouldn't be in there. And they're basically written in a way that can be um, pretty much used right away without having to do a lot of modifications. However... If you are a landlord and you're not utilizing a property manager and you don't have to use a property manager, you can obviously use a property manager if you um, if you want to or if you're a long-distance landlord or if you just don't want to hassle with it. Um, if you are, however, a new real estate investor and you have rental property, I do recommend that at least for some properties that you own, that you go ahead and start um, writing these leases yourself Because that gives you a little bit of exposure of what should be in there, how to structure it, and also kind of the reading of it and the editing of it and the understanding of it will also make you familiar with what your responsibilities are and your obligations as a landlord and what the responsibilities, obligations of your tenants are. And you can communicate that to them without having to go back and look at the lease and ask your property manager and find out if it's legal. If you had written it yourself or if you read it several times yourself, then you'd understand it. And unfortunately, as we all know, with a lot of paperwork, we tend to not read it and just sign it and get it over with. But in this case, and with specifically with leases, I do encourage new landlords or people that have just gotten into real estate investing and have their first rental property available to be very, very mindful of leases and what's in the leases and what's written in there. And specifically because you can also avoid a lot of problems as a landlord. If you don't have basically a paper trail and paperwork that you're um, using in order to um, keep track of everything, there's a high probability that you might get screwed over or your land, your tenants are going to take advantage of you. And there's going to, there's very specific things that you can do to avoid this. These are a lot of these and some of these and a lot of these problems, obviously, I, it is my aim to teach in my programs of what things can happen and illustrate with examples of some of the things that have happened to me and other landlords that I know so that you may avoid these mistakes in the future. So let's talk a little bit about what should be in a lease typically. Um, And I can also, with this product, with the landlord product, I'm going to add a template lease that I have used before that has already information in from previous tenants that you can um, utilize and edit as you please. This is a lease that I have written. I've compiled from a few other leases, and you're welcome to ask me questions on it. But I basically am going to use this lease to kind of 
further this discussion and talk a little bit about what should be in the lease and what should not be in the lease. Um, there's obviously two, two, well, there's more than two types of leases, but there's only two types of leases that I typically use. One is a fixed term residential lease, and then there's a month to month lease. Um, generally, obviously the main things that have to be in the first page are the address of the property and the names of the tenant and the landlord, the date that the lease starts, and also what the lease is leasing. So basically a description of the property, whether it's a two-bedroom, three-bedroom, three two-bathroom house or a townhouse or whatever it is and what's included. Is is there a yard included? Is there a garage included? Is the, Especially if the garage is detached, if there's a shed, all those kinds of things. And a lot of times are right in there. Everything that's electrical, mechanical, plumbing, air conditioning, any other systems or fixtures that are attached any plants, trees, and shrubbery that are part of the property and anything and everything that is on the property right now is collectively referred to as the property. That's kind of what I write in the the lease in the very beginning. I do also want to make sure that on the very first page, if it's a um, fixed-term residential lease, that I state the day that it starts and the day that it ends, and you want to add the, um, the time of the day also, so you typically it's midnight on on the day or zero zero um, zero hundred hours oh one to eleven forty nine p.m. on the last day kind of thing, and um, basically uh, one some of the things that that you want to put in there is to tell the tenants in the lease that for your free guide to real estate investing visit juliammspencer.com.